Jordan was very late for a job interview. When he drove up to the office building, he found out there was no free parking spaces. He decided to leave his car a bit further from the entrance. Oh no, even though there were several other vehicles in that place, parking was prohibited there. Luckily, Jordan came up with an idea and didn't get fined. What did he do? He took a parking ticket from another car and put it on his windshield. It looked as if he'd already been fined. Julia took part in a cooking competition. She decided to prepare her favorite muffins. She did her best and the muffins looked great. But when the jury members tried them, they started to pull faces and splutter. It turned out someone had replaced the sugar Julia was going to use with salt. The girl understood she had lost her chance to become the winner, but at least she could figure out who had done it to her. She had three other competitors. Wayne told her he hadn't even been there. He forgot to buy several ingredients and did some last-minute shopping. Amber said that she had been preparing the icing for her cake. And Diana told Julia that she'd been very busy with her recipe. It was complicated, and she had to follow it precisely. Very soon, Julia knew who had spoiled her muffins. And have you figured it out? It was Amber. She said she'd been preparing the icing, but her cake was only sprinkled with some powdered sugar. That day, famous chef Christina was going to have some very important guests in her restaurant. She was anxious because her future depended on how they would appreciate her food. Everything had to be perfect. There was only one hour left before the guests were supposed to arrive, and that's when Christina discovered someone had left ugly red handprints on her sparkling white jacket. She examined the stains. It was ketchup. Christina knew that some of the cooks didn't like her. She decided to find out who was behind the accident. Look at the cooks and try to help the chef figure out who's guilty. There's a pair of gloves stained with something red in the trash can. The only person who isn't wearing any gloves is the cook on the left. He was the one to spoil Christina's uniform. Nancy was angry with her boyfriend Paul and sent him an email. In it, she told the guy she was going to break up with him. But just an hour after sending the message, the girl found out Paul had done nothing wrong. Now, she needed to delete the email from his computer. The girl knew Paul was at work, so she sneaked into his house. But the computer was protected by a password. Nancy thought the word she needed could be her name. Paul loved her very much after all, but the girl was wrong. And then an idea came to her mind. She typed in a word and this time it was correct. Look at what Nancy saw on the screen and try to figure out the password. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. B, R, Y, M, P, N, A, C, B. The password was 67683. These numbers correspond with the letters of Nancy's name. Linda was in a cafe with her boyfriend, and their date wasn't going very well. At some moment, they both got angry and started to argue. Suddenly, their waiter came up to the table and handed something to Linda. It was a note with a strangely written word. Little T, big R, little O, big U, little B, little L, little E, question mark. Linda was confused. What could it mean? Can you figure it out? The waiter got worried and asked Linda, are you in trouble? Dennis called the police and told them a large sum of money had disappeared from his dorm room. He thought it was one of his neighbors who had done this. The police came and questioned the guy's neighbor. Deborah, a designer, told the officers I had to finish an important project, that's why I pulled an all-nighter. When I sent the final version to the client in the morning, I went to bed and only woke up when you came. Aaron, a waiter, said, I've had a very long shift today because one of my colleagues got ill. I haven't seen Dennis since yesterday. And Nathan, a vet, said, I've just come back home. One of my patients called and told me he felt unwell. I had to hurry to the hospital where he was and stay with him. The police officers immediately understood who was lying. 
And you? It was Nathan who had taken the money. He lied about a patient calling him. He's a vet. Look at these three young ladies. Can you figure out who the cat belongs to? Its owner is the blonde girl. The cat has torn her t-shirt. What does this rebus puzzle mean? M-I-L-1-L-I-O-N That's one in a million. Susan worked as a nurse in a hospital. One day, she came to make injections to three patients. After this injection, it was prohibited to get up, and Susan specifically warned the patients to stay in bed. But when the woman came back, she realized one of them had gotten up while she had been away. Who was it, and how did she understand it? It's the guy on the left. His phone is now plugged in, but the outlet is quite far from his bed. John was hungry. He took something, threw away the outside, and cooked the inside. Then he ate the outside and threw away the inside. What snack did he have? An ear of corn. Jason smuggled antiques into the country. This time, it was a beautiful ancient vase. In no time, he found a person who was ready to buy it. As agreed, Jason came to the park. He had a bag with the vase inside. The guy left it on the bench and hid behind the trees. In less than a minute, a bulky man came up to the bench, grabbed the bag, and went away. When Jason approached the bench again, he saw a note. In it, there was a code. Roads and roads. What is the hidden word? Jason needed just a few seconds to realize the word in the note was crossroads. But which crossroad did his client mean? The guy looked around and saw a modern hotel. Its name was Crossroads. Jason headed for the hotel. He told his name to the receptionist and received yet another note. There was just three letters. F. B. D. After some thinking, the guy understood what the room number was. Do you know it too? It's room 624. F is the sixth letter of the alphabet. B is the second, and D is the fourth. Jason got to the sixth floor and found the room he needed. The door was indeed open. On the table, there was one more note, hopefully the last one. It had three images, a lamp, a bottle of water, and a key. Next to the lamp, there was a downward pointing arrow. Near the bottle, there was an arrow pointing to the left. And to the key, there was an upward pointing arrow. Where is the money? It's under the cushion on the sofa. This cushion is on the right side of the bottle, lower than the lamp and higher than the key, which is lying on the floor. Emily came to the police station to report her diamond ring stolen. Only me, my husband, and his best friend Larry knew where I kept the ring. My husband has been away on business for three weeks. When he left, the ring was still in my jewelry box. It means Larry must have taken it. Detective Richardson visited the man. I know nothing about the ring, and I would never do something like this to my friend. That was when the detective noticed an inconspicuous jewelry box on the shelf over the table. May I have a look? Inside, he saw a diamond ring. This ring was left for me by my great-grandfather. He bought it in Europe decades ago. I even have some papers proving my words. When Detective Richardson looked at the documents, he realized Larry was lying. How did he figure it out? Look at the date. It's February 30th. The documents are fake. How about this rebus puzzle? Let's see how fast you'll crack it. Working time.
It means working overtime. Kayla was staying in a hotel in Paris when someone broke into her room and took all her expensive stuff. The police had three suspects. Alan said, I was trying to pour myself some coffee downstairs, but with my arm in a sling, it was so difficult. Mary told the police, I was at the reception trying to solve some issues with my shower. And Bruce said, I was sleeping. It was so loud at night, I couldn't rest at all. Who broke into Kayla's room? It was Alan. Look at his cast. He's wearing it over his sweater, so it must be fake. 